So in my last video, I walked y'all through how to set up a QuickBooks completely from scratch. Also in that last video, I mentioned that I would be doing a completely separate video on how to set up payroll. And that is what I'm going to be doing this video. When you get into your QuickBooks, this is, it'll bring you to the dashboard screen. And in our quick, in our setup checklist is set up payroll. So we're going to click on that this time and click get started. So the first question that's asked is, have you paid employees in 2023? So if you are a brand new company and you've never run payroll before, the answer would be no. But if the answer, if you have ran payroll before and you're switching to QuickBooks, the answer would be yes. When you click no, it just moves you on to the next prompt. If you were to click yes, you would then have to enter in any prior payroll information to QuickBooks. That way it knows at the end of the year to add the prior payroll information to the payroll that it ran so it would so it can produce the correct W-2s and all the end of year forms. For the sake of this example, I'm going to select no. So then it's going to ask me what my first payday is. I want my first payroll. You can select any date for your next payroll. Um, I'm going to leave it as the day it selected and hit next. So then it's going to ask you what the primary work location is. And this will just be the, this will be the address of your business. The next question it asks is who your payroll contact is. So you want to make sure your payroll contact is an owner in the business. And that way they get all the important payroll information. So then it brings the next question of how did you run your last payroll? And we clicked no earlier. So I'm going to say I've never run payroll. But if you have run per payroll, this is where you could select which you could select how you ran payroll in the, in the past. It then brings you to the screen where you can add your employees. And you click add employee. And you would enter in their first name and last name and their email. So if you enter in their email address and you click the box that says allow employee to enter their tax and bingy into, in, into workforce, this will send them an email and they can input all of their W-4 information and their direct deposit information. If you would rather do that all yourself, you would have them fill out a W-4 and give you the direct deposit information and you could enter that themselves. For ease, we recommend that you send them an email and let, let your employee fill it out for you. You also want to enter in their hire date, whatever that date may be. So I'm going to put today's date. And then add employee. Once you have added an employee, it will bring you to the employee employee's detail screen. It'll tell you what their personal information is, their employment information, um, how what their what their tax withholding is, 
what their payment method is, pay types, deductions, and emergency contacts. The one thing you are going to want to change is the pay types. Pay types is where you would tell QuickBooks whether this employee is an hourly or salary employee and what that hourly rate or that salary rate may be. You can also tell QuickBooks how many hours they work a day and how many days they work a week. If your employee is subject to any other pay types, you can select these boxes as well. So if you have an employee who works over overtime and they get paid overtime, you can select overtime. Or if you have an employee that gets paid commission, you can also select commission. The, ne the next step would be to select any time off policies your employee may have. But you would just, to add these time off policies, you would select add time off policy and then enter in the information regarding this time off policy. There's also places to enter in unpaid, unpaid time off policies, sick pay, vacation pay, and vacation pay as well. Once you have all your pay types entered, you would click save. So in the going back to the employee detail page, whatever you put your pay type at will, will appear in this pay type box. If whenever you send your if you were to send your employee the direct deposit information, this payment method would, would then be filled out with their information. If you have to input that yourself, you would hit start and you would tell QuickBooks we're going to pay with direct deposit. Deposit to one account, or you can deposit to multiple accounts, and you would select whether it's a checking or a savings account, and then input the routing and account number for the for that account or multiple account accounts. If you're depositing into more than one account, you can select how much you want to go into each account or a percentage. If you are if you want to pay into more than one account, you can select how much can go into each account based off of an amount or a percentage. Once you are done with this employee, you can click done. It will then bring you to the screen of who's you, who have you added so far, and if you need to add any other employees, you can add them here. If this is all your employees that you need, you can click Done and Continue. So then it brings you to the payroll screen. The payroll has its own set up tasks. So as you can see, we've already set up payday, and we've already ended the business info. <clears throat> The next step would be finish adding your team. So this would be setting up your employees properly and making sure all they have all the information they need. So if you click finish up, you can see how this employee is incomplete. That is because I don't have all the information entered, such as, such as an employment, such as an employee, such as employment details. So something in employment details that you have to add is the pay schedule. The pay schedule is whether they're going to get paid by weekly, every other week, once a month, twice a month. However you set it up with your employee, here is where you would select that pay frequency. So I'm going to get paid every week. Here's my next payday. And I'm going to get paid every Friday. If you would like to get paid on a different day other than Fridays, you can select which payday you would like here. 
quick save. So the only other thing mine is missing is the payment method, but we're going to leave that blank for now and click done. The next step would be to co connect a bank account. Connecting this bank account, this is the bank account that will be used to pay your employees and it will be used to pay the taxes. So you're going to want to select your business bank account for this bank account. In order to do this, it will rock, walk you through some prompts on how to set up this direct deposit. So you're going to verify the information about your business. And then it's going to ask who the principal officer is. This is the main person associated with that business bank account. Again, this will usually be the owner of the account. And you would enter in the information about this person. And then click Save and Continue. The last step would be to connect the bank account. Like I talked about, you're gonna want this bank account to be the business of bank account. This will be the bank account that the paychecks come out of and that the payroll taxes come out of. You're gonna do this by clicking add and going and walk and going through the same steps. You're going to to add this bank account. Either it will, if you if you already have bank accounts hooked up, if you already have bank accounts attached to this QuickBooks, it would give you the option to select one of those. If not, you can click Add, find what bank account you use, and then it'll take you to a login screen where you can log into your bank account and select your bank account from there. The next step to set up payroll is to set up your taxes. The first step to do that is to enter your tax information. Your tax information will be your the company legal name and the legal address. The next thing we'll ask you is for your EIN. If you do not have an EIN, you will need to get an EIN in order to run payroll. You would enter you would enter in your EIN number here. And the next next question it asks you is what payroll form do you file with the IRS? The most common one is going to be this 941. This is the one that you want to select. The next question it's asked is how often do you want to pay your ta pay your taxes? QuickBooks recommends that you do it semi-weekly and that is what we recommend as well. So we're going to leave it selected as semi-weekly and hit next. The next prompt it gives me is to enter in the state tax information. So since we are in Texas, it is asking for the Texas unemployment information, but this would be different for every state depending on where you're at. So this is where you would enter in the insurance number. And if you don't have a number yet, QuickBooks has a link where you could go and get that account number and get set up with that account. If you don't want to use that link for Texas, you could also go to the Texas Workforce. You can also go to the Texas Workforce Commission's website and click get registered and it'll walk you through on how to register your business in order to pay Texas unemployment. Once you are done, you would click done.
The next step would be to connect your bank account that you, you want to use to pay your taxes. This may already be done whenever you do the first step when you connect the bank account. This may already be done when you connect the bank account in the first step. The last step would be to set up your tax prefer preferences. Payroll has QuickBooks Payroll has a really cool feature where you can automate your taxes. And we highly recommend doing that because it's so easy to forget you have a payment due or forget you have a payroll tax return due and then you miss it and then you can accrue penalties and interest. So we highly recommend that you turn the automation on. The last step would be to take to take care of your team. This is where you can explore 401k plans or health employee health plans. This is something you don't you don't have to do, but you can do. Um, if you do not do these things, it won't affect whether whether or not you can or cannot earn payroll. This is how you set up payroll. If you have any other questions, please let us know, and we will see you next time.